cataractcoach.com with a video of a posterior subcapsular cataract. It's a young patient, only about 50 years old. And you can see on this red reflex, quite a bit of posterior subcapsular changes. Diamond keratome used to make the main corneal incision. Single plane, that looks very good. And now we'll make our capsular axis. Now remember, it's a younger patient. The capsules can be a little bit more elastic. We want to take care in creating a nice round, curvilinear, continuous capsular axis. And my forceps here are marked off at 2.5 and, and 5 millimeters from the tip, so we can be sure to create a nice 5 millimeter opening. Taking our time, we want a very round rexus. We want it well centered. And we have to know that this patient is going to look through the surgery for many decades. This patient's certainly on the younger side. There's our capsular axis. Now, the key in this patient where there's very little nuclear sclerosis is to actually do a lot of hydrodissection. So there's hydrodissection, nucleus prolapse out of the bag. We'll also hydrodelineate. There is that second uh, golden ring. A little viscoelastic going in above and behind the nucleus. That's placing dispersive viscoelastic behind the nucleus to separate and push back the posterior capsule. Fake a probe now on a high vacuum setting, moderate flow, 30, maybe 35 cc's a minute, but a high vacuum, about 400 millimeters of mercury or higher, depending on the size of your phaco tip. And this is just done with aspiration. There's almost no phaco energy here. The nucleus is soft. Look where the chopper is in a safe position smooth end towards the posterior capsule to make sure that if there is a fluidic imbalance, we don't allow the posterior capsule to come towards the phaco probe. Nucleus is out very efficiently. Now we'll remove the cortex as well as any epinucleus. Now remember, with a young patient, this is going to be soft epinucleus. So even if you leave some epinucleus behind, you can remove it with the IA probe like we're doing here. Circumferential approach. Taking on all the cortex and epinucleus. And this patient is opting for a monofocal aspheric lens. So we'll put a single piece of acrylic lens in. Taking our time here to remove the cortex. Cleaning up the posterior capsule, polishing the bag a little bit. Being very careful here. As the saying goes in medicine, right? First, do no harm. That looks great. On the camera settings, I do have the red reflex highlighted particularly strong in order to make good teaching videos here. So any slight opacities that you may see are actually not visually significant. Filling the capsular bag with a cohesive viscoelastic, we'll see our round capsular rexus looks great there. In some of these patients with posterior subcapsular cataract, there can be staining of the posterior capsule. You may not be able to remove all of the opacity. Do the best you can. Be careful not to break the posterior capsule. You can always do a YAG laser capsulotomy in the future. Here's our lens going in the capsule back. We're going to rotate the lens around a little bit. That looks great. And we can see there's a good overlap of the optic by the rexus. I probe now on a high flow, high vacuum setting to wash out and flush out the remaining viscoelastic from the eye. We go behind the eye well here, trying our best to clean up that posterior capsule. And that looks pretty good. Remember that if there is any remaining material here, this can always be yagged later. The yag laser is your friend here. Certainly, if you're doing surgery on my eye, don't pop the capsule during the cataract. I don't mind a YAG laser capsule out of me in the future, but during the cataract surgery, keep my posterior capsule intact. And there's good centration of the lens, good overlap of the rexus, I'll take it. I'm going to seal up the incision, going left to right, back and forth, about the mid stroma. That looks great. And do the same thing here through the paracentesis. Injecting in the angle of the eye to make sure there's no retained viscoelastic, which looks good. And then we'll seal up the paracentesis. In this patient, we're also going to instill some triamcinolone, preservative free, in order to provide some anti-inflammatory effect right after the surgery.
It's not much. It's a dose that's less than one milligram, probably about 0.5 milligrams. And then we'll again swish it around inside the eye, check the pressure. Everything looks great. So thank you guys for watching for an interesting case of a patient with a soft posterior subcapsular cataract.